within the shortest time possible. So today we are joined by um, Nahasha Mungai, uh, who is the Executive Director for Global Markets of Standard Investment Bank. Um, and we shall be talking about those investment solutions. Um, that, as, as I said, that offer premium returns, but also offer capital preservation. And would like to encourage you to ask all the questions that you may have, because it will be a Q&A session. Um, we shall not be having any presentation. We shall be doing a lot of questions. So ask all the questions that you may have. You can um, send them in on the chat box. Um, then we shall cover them as they come. Asante Nisana. So for now, let me hand over to Nahashan to introduce himself. Um, on my side, sorry, before he comes on, um, I shall be joined by my colleague later on. Um, her name is Carol. She will be coming, she will be joining in later on. Uh, but for now, let me introduce Nahashan. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So my name is Nahashin Mungai. I'm the Executive Director of Global Markets at Standard Investment Bank. I'm very excited to um, interact with you today and, and look for, I'm, I'm looking forward to this session where I can answer uh, your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. Asante San. Karibu sana, Nahashin. Um, so I think we shall start immediately with the questions that we've already uh, received. Um, but before then, Tell us a little bit more about Mansa X and what Standard Investment Bank does. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I'll just quickly tell you who Standard Investment Bank, what we are and what we do. So Standard Investment Bank is uh, uh, one of Kenya's largest indigenous investment banks. We were founded in 1995. And uh, at the time we, we, when we were founded, we started off as uh, Standard Stocks and only later became an investment bank in 2003, about eight years later. And our, our company capital at the moment is around 850 million shillings, which is about uh, more than three times the regulatory requirement, which is uh, 250 million shillings. That's what you're required to have as your capital by the CMA. So we are more than three times the regulatory requirements. Uh, additionally, we have a, over 15 billion uh, worth of uh, client assets that we manage. And our client base includes governments, uh, fund managers, corporations, financial institutions, high net worth individuals, and also retail investors. So we serve everybody across uh, the investment landscape. We are also members of the NSC, Kenya Association of Investment Banks and Stockbrokers, and, and have, have been licensed as well to to be one of the, I mean, the only uh, investment bank and fund manager that can invest on the online uh, trading uh, market. So additionally, our products and services. So we have, we offer our clients uh, various, uh, I mean, exposure to various assets. Uh, the first ones are equities. So equity arms uh, trades in company stocks and derivatives where we help our clients to buy or sell shares in the Nairobi Stock Exchange. And we also enable our clients to also trade on the Nairobi Derivatives Exchange. And in this regard, we were actually the first ones to execute a trade on the uh, Nairobi Derivatives Exchange uh, because of our commitment to, uh, to new products. We also have a very strong fixed income desk. Uh, fixed income refers to investments in government bonds, corporate bonds, treasury bills. And uh, we're one of the largest players in this space locally. We also have a corporate finance uh, department where our team works with Kenya's largest uh, public and private institutions. And we have informed uh, the strategic growth of companies in, um, in creating, uh, I mean, optimizing their balance sheets as well as capital raising, whether through IPOs or private placements. And most of the largest transactions that have happened in the last 20 years or so on the Nairobi Stock Exchange, if you're looking at uh, things like the Kenjan IPO and so on have actually passed through our corporate finance department. We also have a very strong research uh, department where we do due diligence and, and uh, provide insights uh, for investors. Uh, we, we typically issue uh, trading briefs, fixed income wraps, uh, weekly market uh, reports uh, to our investors. And, and this is very important for investors especially institutional investors who are looking to make trading decisions. And the, 
the, and that these decisions are will be wholly based on on the due diligence that we we help them to to have. Uh, then lastly is a global markets department. Um, I think that that one is the one that's very specific for today's conversation because it's under the global markets department where we create asset management products. Uh, the largest one being Mansa X, where we we created a fund that is a multi-asset strategy fund. And within global markets, uh, we also help our investors to, uh, to, to, to create hedging solutions if they have foreign currency exposures in, in, in the normal course of doing their businesses. So based on what part of the world that they are in, uh, they, you know, most businesses, especially if their businesses are international in nature, will typically have current foreign currency exposure risk. And through our global markets department, we are able to offer them advice on how to hedge out uh, some of those risks. So what is Mansa X? So Mansa X is, is a fund that we started at uh, Standard Investment Bank uh, at the tail end of 2018 to deal with the investor fatigue that we had witnessed. So we noticed that a lot of investors were looking for um, First of all, investments that, that were giving the higher return than they were typically receiving at the time, but they were also looking uh, for consistency in those returns, as well as the ability to access their funds as and when they needed them. Creating a combination of all those factors is quite difficult. And it, from around 2016, we worked very hard to create a product that would be able to give investors this solution. So in 2017, the Capital Markets Authority uh, released the online forex trading regulations of 2017, which allowed uh, a category of a new category of fund managers referred to as money managers that were able, or rather that were now allowed within a regulatory framework to invest on, their, on behalf of investors in the global financial markets. It's using this license, which we then received at the tail end of 2018, uh, that we created Mansa X. So Mansa X is a combination of, of, um, of two licenses, essentially. The first one being the money manager license uh, that we have from the CMA uh, that allows us to uh, create exposure for investors in, in global financial instruments. The second one is really just our investment banking license that allows us to also help our investors have exposure to certain asset classes that are best done from an in-house perspective. So based on this, we were able to create a fund called Mansa X. It's a multi-asset strategy fund with a long short trading model uh, that is designed to consistently give higher returns without necessarily disproportionately increasing the amount of risk that investors are exposed to. So we're very happy with what with the growth we have seen in Mansa X. Uh, we started with uh, assets of under management at the time in 2018 of around 50 million shillings. And, um, and now we manage about 5.2 uh, billion shillings uh, just about two years later. So we are very proud about that, that growth. And it's proof to us that, you know, the Kenyan investment public is actually looking for exciting products to invest in and, and validates uh, our initial argument around the launch of that product. Thank you, Rose. Interesting. I think, I think um, Hello. Yes, I think when it comes to um, Standard Investment Bank, you you that bank that we as small players in the investment industry we want to get at, like you you our role model. And thank you very much for that introduction, Nahashan. I think it actually opens up the questions that we have. Um, so there was a question that. Um, the first question was what classes of investments um, of assets do does the fund invest in? I think you have answered that, but you can expound on that um, if need be. The other question was, um, I'm, I'm just gonna read it the way it is. Um, trading the financial markets like you do is done using foreign currency. What if I already have a savings, my savings in USD, um, that's currency, and don't want to lose some of it through through the bank exchange rates. Is it a must that I convert? Sorry. 
is it a must that the accounts at SIB um, are in dollar, are in KES? Yes, is it a must that the Kenya the the funds that um, are, the accounts in SIB will be at invested in Kenya shillings? Um, okay. Yes. Okay, maybe I'll start with the first one. What asset classes does a fund invest in? So the asset classes are uh, the first one is currencies. Uh, we invest in various currencies, both global currencies and 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 local emerging market frontier market uh, currencies. We also trade in commodities. Uh, so if you're looking for exposure in, in oil, for example, natural gas, you know, we, we create exposure for investors in that. We trade precious metals, um, gold and platinum. And we also trade in uh, global financial, uh, uh, I mean, global equities. And, this, and, and how we do it is quite unique because we actually buy the real underlying uh, stocks. Of, of, of real underlying companies uh, around the world. But of course, our bias is towards the American market, but we have found also a lot of success with some European companies as well. We also buy and sell uh, stock indices and, and exchange trades within the fund. Another big part of the fund, um, and, and, and this, 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 this was actually very lucrative for us last year when interest rates were reducing, uh, is really a, a fixed income portion where we buy and sell uh, government bonds. So oh the second God. question is whether we can, whether we, whether the investment has to be in shillings. Yes, at the moment, Mansa X is a Kenya shilling denominated fund. So typically when you're running a fund, you have to choose a currency that, that becomes your benchmark. And, and because you, you, will, you will most likely invest in various uh, currencies within uh, the fund. And it's really up to the portfolio manager to hedge his exposure without therefore, I mean, to reduce compromising the return uh, when it still has to report in the local currency. And, and, and that's a choice that you would have to make at the beginning. So for us, because our fund is uh, domiciled here in Kenya, we chose uh, the Kenya shilling to be the, uh, to be the, the currency that the, that the fund uh, works with. But in the future, because we've started seeing a lot of requests uh, from especially diaspora clients who are asking us, can we invest in dollars and so on? So one thing I always uh, uh, advise them is, if if you want to invest in dollars, you can still do you can still do that. Then on our side, we can we can we can price you what you call we can give you a hedging solution. All right. So if if say for example you invest in Mansa X and Mansa X delivers a return of say twenty percent, and we had hedged you out using any number of derivative products, then that might shave off that return by say 10 to 12% and, and, and that would still be the dollar return that you get. So your dollar return will be much lower, but it will be a dollar return if that's what you do. So if you are getting a Kenya shilling return of say 20%, then maybe your dollar return will be close to eight to 10% because of yeah. those hedging costs. So it's a solution that we have for our investors so uh, like, uh, like this investor, I see Martin Oloka, if you reach out to us, we can actually help you uh, structure a hedging solution uh, for your funds and still allow you to have exposure to Mansa X. All right. Um, and what are the inherent risks for the fund? The inherent risks for the fund uh, are very similar to any other fund. Uh, the, the, most imp the most obvious one being market risk. Okay, the fact that you know markets can and 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 can always move against you, because we we this is a, a completely market determined fund. We do our best to employ a lot of risk management techniques to protect our investor funds, but there's always the risk that you know uh, markets go up and they go down. That's your biggest risk, and 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 this is something that we constantly manage on your behalf. The things I want to make it very clear is due to the fact that we invest in so many asset classes and we invest in so many financial instruments, it means that Mansa X is inherently protected uh, from concentration risk. Concentration risk means that if, if I have invested in the stock market, for example, I, I still have investments in fixed income. I still have investments in some derivative product. It means that a lot of things would have to go wrong 
for you to actually lose your money. And like some other funds where, you know, I'm only in five or six asset classes, and not even asset classes, just five or six instruments, and all of them have in what you call one way risk, because maybe I have bought um, five shares in the Nairobi Stock Exchange. And we all know when a correction comes in a, in a stock market, it goes down with all the stocks. Then that, that in, a, in a fund like that, you, have a, you actually have a lot more risk uh, than a fund uh, like Mansa X, where we have really spread out your risk. So that's, that's how we protect uh, our investors. Okay, so the idea here is diversification into different um, asset classes so that Absolutely. at least you can be able to protect yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we continue, uh, please continue asking uh, questions in the chat box, keep them coming. We shall continue, uh, and not just about Mansa X, about uh, the investment uh, industry at the moment. We shall on answer all the questions that you may have. Um, then talk about the withdrawal procedure when it comes to Mansa X. Can one um, withdraw their earned profit um, or can, like, what is the holding period if there's a holding period um, and also the minimum amounts? And also you can talk about the investments for people uh, who have small monies, not the minimum initial investment currently that is at 250 shillings. Okay. Uh, yes, so... We have a lock-in period of six months. What lock-in period means is you're not allowed to access your funds for uh, at least six months. But after that period, you can always access your profits or even, even I mean, any, 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 uh, any portion of your investment as you wish uh, from that period. And, and the withdrawal process is pretty easy. You just write to us and we'll be able to turn around a withdrawal for you within uh, 48 hours. And, and that's one of the things that that... Uh, we are very happy about because we're able to create a fund that again offers um, liquidity to our investors, allowing them to access their funds quickly as as when they need their funds. Then, um, sorry, what was the other one? The other one was on the minimum amount. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, so, yes, are them, I, I, I know I have said this on, a, on two forums before this and, and it, 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 I might sound like I'm repeating myself, but yes, we are working on a product which is going to allow investors to have access to a product that that that, that allows them to invest smaller amounts, uh, 250,000. Uh, at the more, at, what, at the time we started this fund, it made administratively more sense to have a higher uh, minimum balance. But we're working very hard to create a product. We are at the tail end of that. Uh, we are working very uh, closely with the regulator. And one of the reasons uh, we haven't yet launched is because even from a distribution perspective, we need to get certain things right, especially because this is a product that, first of all, you'll have a lot more clients on board, uh, meaning that we have to be very careful how, how certain systems are working. So we are testing a lot of this in the background. We have actually been testing our systems for about two months now. So once this testing phase is over, then we'll be very happy to launch this to the product because when we started out, we started out Mansa X and, and the whole idea of giving exposure to investors uh, to various asset classes. The, the, we wanted this to be something that's accessible to everybody. So that is a dream that we still have. And your concerns are still our concerns as well. And we look forward to solving that. Perfect. Um, I like that um, we are actually listening to the small investors because I think money actually moves a lot. Um, to within the small investors, because you can be able to spare at least now 10,000 shillings, maybe on a monthly basis or on, um, yeah, per, per fortnight for investments. Um, so, and I think the market is ripe for this product. Month. Yeah. yeah, very ripe. I mean, um, we, are, we are excited because the fact that we have a lot of people saying that they want to invest in this fund, even with smaller amounts, is proof. Again, again, like I said, it validates our initial uh, dream that investors are looking for uh, for other ways to invest and and that's really exciting for us too yes of course we are looking for ways i am saying we because i'm also an investor um, we are looking for products that 
it's very hard right now actually in the market it's very hard to get a product that gives you as a good return a very good return and also um can preserve your capital because risk and uh, returns go hand in hand mostly so sometimes you have investments that offer very good returns however your principal is not guaranteed yeah anything can happen to it yes and we had also talked about the withdrawal procedure um i think um if you can clarify nahashon you can withdraw the profits that you earn on a monthly basis after your lock in period uh, yes you can all right perfect yeah. all right okay so um how do you compare um local stocks and mansa x like where would you put your money how and and also um via circles of course we are going to assist also on the circles part okay um uh, of course for us we 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 have invested and and participated in the in the local stock exchange uh for more than 26 years now mm -hmm. so we are still there are still very good opportunities locally uh there are still some very good stocks you can buy locally there are still some good ways you can make money in the nairobi stock exchange definitely uh, we at mansa x also invest in local stocks just to be very clear when we say we invest in global financial markets nairobi is one of them so we also invest in the nairobi stock exchange the only thing i'd say is if for example you move to the new york stock exchange then you're looking at a lot more stocks that are investable all right and and that's one of the things that i, I mean that's one of the reasons why we gravitate towards that direction and and we have found um we have found a lot of success uh trading uh uh shares you know in 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 the US in 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 Germany and 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 London and the reason for this is because those markets again are more mature than ours meaning that they are also very liquid liquidity is very important for us at Mansa X the ability to exit positions very quickly uh that's a very important factor and a very important part of our trading technique and that's why we like those markets but that's not to say that local markets are, are not as good the only thing i'd say is the trade the cost of trading um differ significantly and and i guess this is something that of course maybe uh our regulator i mean in conjunction with the government can work towards because if you look at the cost of uh entering and exiting stock positions in the new york stock exchange versus what what you pay locally it's 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 a lot higher locally um, and it, and it was made even more uh, costly when the government introduced vat on 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 stock brokerage fees so a bad situation turned into us so there might be opportunities here that are very similar so for example if if i'm buying um if i'm buying atnt and and i get a 10% move uh the moment i get in and out i'll probably keep about Nine and a half percent of my return on that trade, but on the local stock market, I'll probably just keep about five percent of that trade. That tells you that the trading costs locally can eat into the return significantly. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 a concern for us. But all of them are markets that we trade. Yeah. All right. Um, there's someone who had asked why the locking period i hope you have been answered um at least it's so that you can allow the fund to make some money before you can pull out yeah yeah and and, and 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 just to be clear we don't even have a penalty for exit i mean i'll tell you the truth we don't it's just that for as an investor you you need to get, you also have some discipline around i invested somewhere let, let me give it some time to grow so six mm -hmm. six and um, six month locking period only just makes sense and we feel yeah. that it's it's a much shorter lock in period than funds that are very similar to ours employ. Mm. All right. And is the fund exposed to any crypto um as an asset? At the moment no. Uh we have never invested in um in the crypto market. I know we have a lot of critics who then argue that our returns would have been much higher if if we invested in crypto markets. So there are two reasons for this. One is really just from a portfolio management perspective cryptos are are very uh, volatile and uh, we were not very sure we wanted to introduce that volatility in the fund and and increase disproportionate risk uh, to our investors so at the moment we have not touched cryptos um, and the second one is also from a regulatory perspective uh, 
the the CBK and the CMA are still not very clear. And and there was even uh, I mean there was actually an actual warning from the regulators just about two years ago when we started against mm -hmm. trading in cryptos or engaging in crypto business. So for us, no, we haven't traded in those. Okay. I mean, I mean, crypto is literally, it's currently, it's just being moved by one person. So, yeah, when he wakes up and says, um, Tesla is going to invest in, or we are going to be accepting yeah. crypto, yeah. it moves when he yeah, wakes up and puts, yeah. Yeah, that's a very good point you bring up because the value the value of a crypto asset, or, or, or let's even just say a cryptocurrency, is really just determined by what you say it's worth. Yes. Okay. And that's a danger. We find that dangerous because you see, for us, we typically invest in what you call yielding assets, meaning mm -hmm. whether we are selling them or not, there's some cash flow generated from holding those assets. If I'm holding stock, then I'm then I'm receiving uh, dividends from those stocks. If I'm holding mm -hmm. government bonds, I'm receiving coupons from them. If if I'm holding um, real estate, there's rental income coming from that. However, mm -hmm. if I'm holding crypto, I can only ever make money if I sell at a higher price to somebody else. The only non-yielding asset that we hold is gold. Okay, and mm -hmm. there's a reason for that because uh, we use it to hedge uh, some of our currency exposures. So that's mm -hmm. the only non-yielding asset that we hold. Yeah. Okay. Um, please comment about uh, the social media issues that were there with um, Mansa X, there was, there was an article that was going wrong. Um, yes, just comment up on it. Um, the question is whether it's a Ponzi scheme. Um, I would try and answer it and say for Ponzi schemes, really, they don't have anything. They don't have an asset base when it comes to the investment. Like they can't show you, we have invested here and this is where the returns are going. It's more like the biggest person gets money from the smallest person until the pyramid goes down. So yes, over to you, Nahashan. You you actually answered my question. Mm. <laughs> Part of it. Yeah. But yes, yes, that's a that's a very good introduction because yes, a Ponzi scheme means that I am I actually don't buy or sell anything, right? Mm -hmm. So I receive money from Peter and then I use that money to pay Paul and then when Tim comes in, then we use it to pay Paul and so on and then it grows like that. Now that can work for in perpetuity unless investors stop coming in, uh, then they, and then you become exposed. So. It's, it's very unfortunate that I, I even have to discuss this because I find that even the caliber of, of bloggers that we are dealing with here are, I mean, I don't think they have any authority to, to even have been discussing investments of this nature. But the truth of the matter is they attacked us, yes, uh, last year claiming that we were a Ponzi scheme. And one of the questions they had was, where does Mansayax invest their money? Can you show us? You know, you need to show us where your money is. So. I don't know whether they were coming from the traditional aspect of they need to see buildings that we own around town uh, that are now owned by Mansa X, because we suspect maybe that's that's where their level of thinking was coming from. But we were able to take them to court, so we took that very seriously because not only did it impact us and 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 uh, our corporate um, uh, our, our, our ourselves, but it also affected our investors because. Our investors started worrying about, you know, are these people actually telling us the truth also? So we took them to court and we actually uh, won all the cases against all those bloggers. One of the reasons we were able to win against them was because we are, we are very regulated by the CMA. The, the CMA does regular inspections and checks on us. So the CMA was actually able to come out as our regulator and, and, and on our behalf uh, made it very clear that, you know, everything we're doing is above water. And, and that's one of the reasons why the court was able to quickly issue uh, a ruling against these bloggers. Uh, actually, one of the fastest rulings against these bloggers that, that have been seen on this land. So there was absolutely not, not, not truth in any of this. And one of the things that our investors can have comfort is in, I mean, comfort in is that one of the things we are changing in our fact sheets moving forward is really just also outlining our, our top 10 holdings in the fund. Okay, this is something that we will start doing uh, just for the sake of our investors. We won't outline every single asset that is owned by Mansa X because then that doesn't make sense because then everybody can just go out there and, and replicate the fund. But we can give you the top 10 holdings that we have. 
But if anybody has any further questions or is concerned about our holdings, another thing is the CMA holds all our trading records uh, from the regular inspections that they, uh, they conduct on us. Perfect. Perfectly said. I think it's well answered. I think it also answers a question that was on the chat um, from um, Peter Kinodia, who have invested with them and want to join Nogopa lest I lose my money. I think, uh, Peter, you're protected first. Um, there are certain levels of protection that are there. First, the regulation from Capital Markets Authority. Um, and second, uh, the fact that they are trying to diversify as much as possible so that at least you get good returns and as well you can make sure that kind of the principal amount or whatever you had invested has a preservation on it yeah um there's someone who had answered the question i mean i'm gonna for long joseph uh joseph ngugi you can unmute yourself and ask the question Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, my name is Joseph. Mm -hmm. I'm a young Kenyan in this country. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm asking, how is Mansa X be able to, to maneuver the, the storms of COVID-19? Because currently other markets, the stock market is performing poorly, but Mansa, they are able to deliver a good return above inflation, which is quite recommendable. So what, what is their game plan in this market? That's a good question. I think it answers a few other questions that we have, um, Nahashon. And if I may answer for Nahashon before he answers, um, the game plan is diversification. Nahashon? Yes, uh, thank you for that. And Joseph, first, thank you for that commendation. Um, I, 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 I'm not so sure what you mean. Uh, if you look at how markets recovered after COVID last year, the stock yeah. market, for example, the S&P rallied over 30% uh, just yeah. post COVID to what you call a V-shaped recovery. And yeah. just this year, low, uh, most, stocks, uh, most stocks are actually printing at an all-time high. As we speak, yeah. just yesterday, the NASDAQ at, at an all-time high. And NASDAQ is a collection of most of the tech companies in the world. So markets are actually not struggling. If, if you look at uh, commodities like oil, uh, during uh, COVID, I mean, we had, we had oil actually dip to the first negative prices we've ever seen in the history of the world, where uh, oil prices reached negative $37 a barrel. As we speak, uh, we are now trading at $72 a barrel. Look at that recovery. So markets, uh, Joseph, just to be clear with you, are actually not struggling. In fact, I'd only say it's just maybe the last two months or so that most stocks, most stocks have averaged, um, have had a mean reversion of about 1%, which means that not much of a movement, uh, but that's also because we are going into summer. So trading, trading uh, volumes have actually reduced, but it's nothing to do with the underlying stocks. And then let's just talk about the kind of stocks that Mansa owns. So we typically buy uh, dividend, uh, high dividend yield in stocks, all right? And, and, and that's part of our strategy here. If you look at most dividend, uh, I mean, the average uh, dividend yield that, uh, that Mansa owns is above 5% on dollar denominated stock. And, and we've not even talked about the capital appreciation on those stocks. That's how we're able to make our return. And at any one time, uh, Mansa X, we're holding over 40, 40 individual stocks. And we haven't even talked about other asset classes, just stocks alone. We're already on about 40 stocks. That diversification allows us to, because you don't really need to beat the market by a very big margin. There's a reason for that. You're already, you're already, um, we're already operating from, an, from a frontier market, what you call a frontier market, which means that your own currency depreciation is already on your side. So for us, if, if I'm able to squeeze out an average, a, a return of say 15%, uh, from global mm -hmm. markets, the rest of the return will just come from the depreciation of the shilling alone. So that's one of the advantages also that we have locally. So that is how we're able to do it, Joseph. Okay. I hope you've been answered. So there is Elizabeth 
and Timothy, if you can chat your questions um, as well, if you're in a position to chat your questions, please chat them on the, shoot them at the chat box. We shall answer them as, yeah, as we go along. I think we start with Elizabeth first. At least to hear a different voice than Rose in the show. Uh, thank you. Hey. We can hear you. Okay. So I'm new at this and I'm sorry if I'm having to repeat what has already been addressed, but I'd, I'd like to kind of consolidate my questions. So number one, what is the current return on investment for Mansa X? Number two, is that return on investment on a daily increased basis? Like, do you add yesterday's, um, um, yesterday's profit to, day, to today's uh, capital in order to trade it? And then what happens beyond the six months? And um, beyond the six months, uh, do we still lock it in for, or is it open? And then uh, lastly, do you have an Akuru office? I'd Very like to join. Okay, so at the, at the moment, uh, for the first quarter, we returned 20% uh, around 20% before fees. We are yet to announce our second quarter returns, uh, which are coming out in 15 days. And then how do we calculate our returns? Is it on a daily basis? Yes, it is. Uh, so every day, the fund goes through what you call a revaluation based on the open positions that the fund is holding. We then um, we then um, attribute uh, uh, either a gain or loss uh, to the fund on a daily basis. This is done by our system. Uh, what happens beyond six months? Uh, do you then go through another lock-in period? No, after that, you're open. If you've been invested with us for at least six months, you can always access your funds uh, for the rest of your uh, lifetime in our funds. Then the fourth question, do we have an Nakuru office? Unfortunately not, uh, but we we will now endeavor to open one because you're you are, you're one of the many people who actually reached out to us with that I mean reached out to us with that question yeah hope that answers you I think it does um, and also um, just to note that the investment returns is usually on the you really. The only way you can you can be able to predict you can't really predict the investment returns. You can just wait to see how the market plays out. But now, as long as um, Nahashon is behind the desk and trading very well, we know that the fund is in good hands. Um, in 2019, you did a return of about 24 um, percent. Last year, you did a return of about 18.75 percent. That is net or uh, net of fees and um, withholding tax, which is quite impressive. So we can only wait to see what you do if you've done um, quarter one at 20%. So annualized, let's say how much? That, that can... is annualized. That's annualized. Oh, that's annualized. That's annualized, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah okay. that's annualized, yeah. We yeah. can only wait to sit down and wait now and see what the return will be by the end of the year. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and it's very good that you point that out because one of the things that that uh, that can be very confusing to investors, and the, and this is a this is as a result of how funds have typically been marketed in Kenya and how investments have been marketed in Kenya, because investments are always marketed as bring your money to us and we will give you ten percent, or bring your money yes. to us we'll give you thirty percent. In fact, we see some other in investment avenues saying you know bring your money to us we'll give you five percent every week. So there's a very big bias uh, to marketing investments based on their returns. It's very important for you to know that at Mansa X, uh, the return that we give you and that we quote is really what we've done historically in the past. But it's a result of what we, we set out to create in the first place. A fund that is very well diversified, that gives you exposure to different markets, therefore preventing you from having concentration risk. And this, if you do this properly enough, you most likely will have an above average return. So we do not promise any, we don't guarantee any, any returns. And we might even have a higher return than we did last year, but typically that is the whole uh, philosophy behind the fund. Because sometimes people ask us, uh, how, how much are you looking to give us this year? We, we can't really predict that, but we can only tell you that based on uh, a well thought out portfolio allocation techniques and proper execution of said technique, then we can give you a certain return. 
And, and this is something that's very important for investors to realize because the reason why a lot of people have actually lost money in markets is exactly because of that. Because then there are people who come to them and give them false comfort that they can guarantee them returns. And then these people, most of the time, uh, turned out to be uh, really just stealing their money. And the, result, and the reason for this is because a lot of investors fail to also ask other questions that are just as important. For example, how, how quickly can I get my money if I needed it? Uh, you know, what you call liquidity. That's a question a lot of investors will not ask until the day they need their money. And then the fund manager tells them, no, we, you can't, we can't give you your money because of A, B, C, and D. So there are other questions that Kenyan investors need to start asking other than just being predominantly focused on, on that issue of return. I agree. Um, I think we usually look at the investments in just in terms of yeah, what, how much money am I making? There's so many other things that you need to consider. Yeah. And you might actually be having the money to invest or you, you think that you need to invest in Mansa X, but when you look at your budget or something of the sort or your future predictions when it comes to money, you don't have the capability. So before you invest, you actually need to um, consider your risk appetite versus your risk capability as an investor. Always consider that. So there, there is a question from Anne Timothy. Yeah, Anne and Timothy. If you can please chat it in, please do so, so that we can um, go through it. Um, and then there's a question that has come in um, in terms of the future of Mansa X. Um, what is the foreseeable future of it? What is the expected lifespan? Of course, we would want it to last forever. Um, and then um, in terms of the return, um, someone has said when I signed up, there was a promise of returns that can easily go beyond 24% th threshold. These days you talk about of up to 24%. What has been a, your experience for you to provide that capping? I, I think you have answered it in a different way. Okay. Mm. Okay. First of all, what's the future of Mansa X? And, and thank you very much, Ella, for that. Because for us, at, 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 for us, this is a going concern. We've been around for 26 years. We are not planning to, you know, just come and do um, a small gig and then get out of the investment space. When we set out with this product, one of the things we were trying to do was really just uh, change how Kenyans access investments. Let me make it. Let me give you an example. So about 10 years ago, if you needed to take a taxi uh, from Nairobi, I mean, from town to Westlands, you needed, you'd have gone to Hilton. There used to be a parking lot there where there were taxis. So you get a taxi there and then you go to Westlands. If anyone at the time told you that in a few years you'd be doing, you'd be using taxi hailing apps to get a taxi, you'd never have believed it. But at some point, everyone in Kenya was doing this. And if you look at how uh, the, the, the level of exposure that uh, Kenyans have, it's quite significant. Um, Kenyans have the, one of the highest internet usage uh, levels uh, on the African continent. So when a Kenyan wakes up in the morning, he uses a, a, an Uber to go to the office. He uses uh, a, a, a food application app to order food for lunch in the office, for example. And maybe later in the evening, he, he watches YouTube or Netflix. And then when it comes to investments, we are happy to tell our investors that the only thing you can do is buy some land in Kitharian and that's it. There's a very serious disconnect. So the future of Mansa X and, and, and SIB is actually just to bring the same innovative uh, tools that exist in all these other areas of our life, we believe should also exist within uh, how investors can access their, and, and how investors can manage their, their portfolio. That's why we were also one of the first uh, through our, one of our subsidiary uh, forefront management to actually create the first robo advisors in Kenya where you know ro um, robots which which then work on the input of the client based on their risk, uh, their risk profile, are able to then advise clients on where they should invest. And we believe that this is really the future uh, of investments in Kenya. So we are here to stay and, and, and we believe that this is really just the beginning. Perfect. Um, very perfectly answered. Um, I think Anne Morimi, you can uh, unmute yourself. Okay, thank you, Rose, I, for unmuting me. Thank you so much, SIB and Nahashon and team for opening up a space for Kenyans to be able to trade in 
you know, the products that you're trading in, which is a different instrument that has not been available for so long. And when it has, it's not been regulated enough. So people have lost their money. So um, my question is, there is a new market that has opened up internationally, which is cryptocurrency. And being, a for, being in the forefront of investments in Kenya, are you doing anything to allow Kenyans to access that market in a regulated way? Because we are interested, but we, are, we have no knowledge and skills. Neither do we uh, know how to do it, but being, this being your field, what are you doing and how can we join you? Okay, thank, thank you, Anne, for that. And, and, and this is exactly what I'm saying. You know, when it comes to Kenyans, Kenyans will always know about things that are happening globally. And, and therefore it's always a shame if, if you then don't provide those solutions for, for those Kenyans. And, and, and Anne is, is an obvious example here. So behind the scenes, as I mentioned earlier, so one of the, one of the reasons why we were not trading cryptos was really to avoid the portfolio disruption that it can have due to the inherent volatility of that asset. But there was also the regulatory aspect of it where the regulator has been very shy to allow crypto trading locally. However, behind the scenes, we are engaging the regulator and the regulator, I have to say, we have a very good regulatory environment right now uh, in, the, in the capital markets. Uh, the capital markets authority is doing an excellent job in accepting as much innovation as possible and, and, and creating a, um, an environment that helps that to, uh, to bud. And cryptocurrency is one of the conversations that we are having uh, with the regulator behind the scenes. And I suspect that very soon uh, we'll be able to come out with something for Anne Moremi and 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 her and, 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 have, and her friends to be able to to be able to trade and and have exposure in cryptocurrencies. The only thing I'd warn investors is just to realize that when it comes to cryptocurrencies, you have to be very careful if if you want to get into those investments. Just remember that uh, a lot of those uh, crypto assets are, are are typically based on what. The, and the programmers and, and the trading community of that asset believe the value of, of that currency is. So there's always a risk that if for whatever reason that valuation was wiped out, then you can lose all your money because don't forget that there's no fallback on those cryptos. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, you can't say that, okay, I was not able to sell it, but I, I, I can keep it and use it to, to do something else different in the future. Of course, all coins, Crypto assets have different attributes, uh, I admit that, but it's very important for retail investors to understand the risks around, around trading and trading these assets. And I like the fact that Anne was very clear that she, she doesn't have the expertise, but would want to someone with the expertise to help her have the exposure in that. And, and we are listening and we'll come with a solution for that. All right. To add on to that, um, when it comes to such investments, I think we shall, we shall kind of cover the portfolio allocation or how someone can actually try and balance out a portfolio. When it comes to such investments that are risky to take, you at least put in money that you can close your eyes through the night and not worry about. So we usually advise at least um, about 3% or maybe about up to a maximum of 10% of your whole net worth. Yeah. So you make sure first your net worth is above... Um, you, you have a positive net worth, that is your assets are above, um, are way above your liquid or your liabilities. And then you make, you, you try and make um, the such risky investments to up to maximum of 10%. At least that one, if anything was to happen, you can easily make the money back. Or, yes, if you're not going to be able to make the money back in the shortest time possible, you can close your eyes at night, the whole night and sleep. And yeah, you won't and, worry. And, it's, and it's important that you say that, Rose, because I think investors also need to understand that you can always talk to a financial advisor. In yes. fact, uh, Vasily Africa here, that's what they do. So they offer financial advice because mm -hmm. just the same way you go to see a doctor when you, know, you have concerns around your health is the same way you should really see a financial advisor when you're trying to make certain decisions around how to diversify your portfolio and so on. And it's something that, I hope Kenyans will adopt more moving forward. Yes, I, at least let us not go, when, when you're investing, don't just think about the return. Also think about how every investment solution is going to fit into your plan, your end game. Our end game is financial freedom. Yeah, just not the 
yeah, the returns only. So uh, we have so many raised hands. I would ask them please to kindly chat. Um, so we are not going to be able to allow everybody to talk through, but we can, if you can chat, we can be able to see which questions marry and then ask one question, a combined question. Um, that is John, Damaris, Brian, Jonathan, please. If you can kindly chat the question. Yes, there, there was a question that had been asked earlier about um, how we can compare investing in Mansa X vis a vis investing in circles. I think. So, in fact, so I saw that question earlier, and 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 I'd ask you, Ella, about <laughs> what kind of returns are circles giving out here? And yes, some circles are not giving bad returns, but I guess I guess it just comes. Oh, there, there are two advantages that um, actually there are three advantages that Mansa X has. The first and most important, and this is why I think maybe we might do better than some circles, is really just our liquidity, right? You can be able to access your funds very quickly. I've seen I've seen circles out here you know, talk about we can give a certain return and so on. And when your investors want to exit, they tell them, you know, okay, you have to sell some of your shares. And and first of all, you're on a waiting list here. The, you can only get your, someone can only buy your shares after six months. So please bear with us and so on. And if you're in a situation where you are trying to handle an emergency, then you find yourself in a really tight spot. So that's one of the advantages in Mansa X, the fact that we're able to be liquid enough to handle uh, such, uh, such a request quickly enough. Uh, then the second thing is just really that we are very well diversified. Uh, I know Circles has most done an excellent job of managing their client funds and a lot of the assets that they invested in also tended to be assets that you know were, were gaining in value for a very long time uh, and, and specifically the Kenyan real estate market. I know, I know a lot of Circles did very well investing in those, uh, but if then you have a stagnation in any of those assets, then those returns might be compromised in the future. But if you're in a fund like Mansa X, the advantage is if the one asset is underperforming, then you most likely have two or three others that are doing fine. That diversification can, can lead to even just a consistency of returns, which is important for investors. And then yeah. the third most important thing is that um, Mansa X can trade in, uh, long, I mean, can have long and short trading models, meaning that sometimes you can make money if the value of our underlying assets are going up and we also use certain derivatives to make sure that we can make money if, if, if assets are actually losing value. Great. And to add on to that, I think it's a trade secret I should steal for our investors. Suppose even invest in this um, high yielding investment solutions that offer capital preservation. Yes. So they get good returns, then they bring back the returns to you as dividends. Yeah. Actually, actually, we have we have circles who invest with us as clients. Uh, so just to answer your question, they also mm -hmm. tend to be our clients in the fund as well, and we appreciate okay. and we appreciate that business quite a bit. Okay. Exactly. Um, so I think we go back to the portfolio allocation. Um, this is just a general question. How does one hedge their portfolio and what are the preferable securities to use in hedging for unforeseen circumstances ahead of time? The first and, and, and most important way of hedging yourself is really just invest in as many assets as possible. All right. And, 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 but Diversification is a, is, is, a, is, a, is a very interesting thing because a lot of people don't realize that you can invest in what you call correlated assets, all right? So if, if I'm diversifying myself by buying 10 different banking stocks, then I'm not really diversified because I'm, I still have a concentration risk to the banking sector, all right? So one of, the ways, one of the ways to hedge your portfolio is to have genuine portfolio allocation. So for example, if I am long government bonds, uh, then I, I can have some government bonds and then I'm also invested in the stock market. That's genuine diversification because those two are in different asset classes or I have bought uh, some gold and, 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 and then uh, shorted the US dollar, for example. Those are two different asset classes. So that's what you call real diversification. And that's one of the fast and easiest way to hedge yourself. The second way, which is a lot more complex, and I know these are some of the things that we employ in Mansa X, is really just employing the use of derivatives and because what this allows us to do is, just to give you an example, we'll buy 
uh, what you call option contracts. So an option contract is a derivative uh, that gives you the right, uh, but not an obligation to sell or buy certain asset classes uh, based on agreed parameters. Do that, that allows, for example, if I have bought uh, a stock in Facebook, for example, and, and the US stock market is tanking, then I can buy what you call put options and I still make money from the fact that the market is actually losing value. And funds exactly because you're able to get into instruments that allow you to hedge your portfolio. So hedging your portfolio is quite complex and, and it's one of the reasons why we, allow, we, we encourage uh, investors to invest in a fund like Mansa. It's exactly the reason why, because we are creating a very, very simple to invest into vehicle, but a very complex, uh, a very complex uh, vehicle behind the scenes that really protects you and allows you to have exposure to, to instruments that on your own would have been very difficult to even ever know how to, 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 to trade in, unless you're a full-time trader. Great. Um, so literally it's just, um, what do you call it? Collective investments into global markets, those investments that yes, I can see, probably I want to invest, but I don't know how to go about it. Yeah. Um, there's a question about diaspora, yeah? So for the diasporas who want to invest locally with travel restrictions, can you open a set, or can fully set up an investment plan with SIB individually or as an association of diasporans? Um, so basically, I think if I can, I see whether I can summarize it, it's just, what is the option for diasporas to invest in SIB? I don't know whether it's through Mansa X. Um, perhaps you can clarify that, um, John. Um, but I think the, the, the... He wants to know whether he can invest as a diaspora client. Yes. Or a rather a diaspora resident. Yes, you can. I mean, we have a lot of diaspora clients invested with us. Mm -hmm. it's, and, and if you reach out to us, whether through our website or send an email to us, someone will reach out to you quickly enough with, and take you through the process of opening your account. This is something that we, we have done for investors as well. And even if you're a US citizen, we, we, are, we are FATCA registered and we, we are also registered with the IRS. Uh, so we're able to, I mean, even from a tax perspective, you're able to uh, you're able to show Mansa X as an investment and, and they'll recognize that because we are part of the FATCA uh, framework. But I would imagine you're Kenyan. So if you are, then it's, it much, it's much easier to come through the Kenyan uh, on a Kenyan platform. Because then even from a tax perspective, here you don't get taxed if you're invested in Mansa X. Okay. Um, in, in regards to tax, there was a question on um, whether you, there is a foreseeable, there is yeah, foreseeable tax on uh, profits from Forex. Well, the returns from funds like ours is categorized as capital gains because most of our asset classes, most of them, not all of them, but most of them are really just market determined returns. So yes, about, about two, three years ago, the government tried to have capital gains tax on capital markets trading, uh, even in the stock market. But it's very difficult to implement because how do you tax something that you know, one day you're making a profit and maybe you lose the next day and so on and so forth. It's not really a continuous return. It's very difficult uh, for the government to tax and, or rather they scrap the capital gains tax because it really just slowed down trading and became very complex for people to make their uh, tax returns. Do I think that maybe one day the tax might return? Of course it might. I mean, the, the more uh, lucrative an industry becomes, of course the government will look for a way to tax it because I mean, even if you look at the US now, uh, they proposed uh, an exorbitant capital gains tax of, 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 of 40%. And, and this might just come in, in in September. And of course, we suspect one of the reasons they introduced uh, such a hefty capital gains tax in the US is really just to capitalize on all this crypto trading that's going on. So if, mm -hmm. if something is lucrative enough, of course, the government will find a way to tax it. But at the Don't moment, so let's take advantage when we are not being taxed. I actually wanted to say wasikuskie. Wasikuskie. <laughs> wasikuskie. Yeah, so let's not from... encourage yeah. that conversation. <laughs> Please don't record. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's yeah. a question on um, 
compounding, uh, if Mansa X compounds over a period of time, the other question is um, if someone signs up, I think this was one, this one was answered very, if you sign up, um, do you sign up for a specified return? No, we said the returns that are already there are um, past performance returns. So we can only wait and see. It's more like a wait and see, but now we have a very able portfolio manager and investment manager, um, yeah, who is running the show. So we can only wait to see the returns. Over about the compounding. So compounding, I mean, compounding as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a function assumes that every day you have an ever slightly increasing uh, return, okay? So the reason why compounding is very difficult to explain in a fund like ours is because I might have two profitable days and maybe one day that's not profitable. So yes, there's an element of compounding, but not as smooth or exponentially as you'd have in a fund that makes a fixed return. So. I'd say maybe if you looked at compounding from a fund like ours, which is which 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 has a lot of uh, what you call a discrete um, discrete return from day to day, then maybe compounding from a yearly perspective then can make sense. That if this year I made a return of about eighteen percent, and then I did not withdraw any of my funds, and then started the new year with that that return, then I am compounding annually. But if I'm compounding the, the, the lower the time period reduces, the more the compounding doesn't make a lot of sense because of that aspect of day-to-day -day shifts in market revaluations. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a bit different from a fund that say has invested purely, uh, say in fixed income. So we know that you know, quarter on quarter, we are receiving a certain coupon, for example, and then my capital base can never change. And that's why it's a bit, diff it's a bit difficult to really use that compounding function in a fund like this, but there's an aspect of it, yes. All right, I think very well answered. Um, uh, what's your take on savings and credit cooperative organizations? Uh, Celestine, his take or, yeah, on a personal note <laughs> or, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you can That's answer circle, on a personal right? note, yes. I thought we discussed circles, yes, but I mean, uh, just, I'd say circles, I mean, there's, there's also one advantage of circles, huh? yeah, because you can borrow from them, okay? Yeah. So they, they might be useful for an investor who's, who probably wants to save for a short period of time and then wants to borrow against that. So there's that advantage. Uh, but maybe my only issue would be going back to liquidity. For me, liquidity is very important. And I think it should be for any investor because uh, if you invest in this circle, please check historically what, what kind of turnaround time do they have when it comes to paying their investors if the investors need to access their funds as and when they need those funds? That I think is critical for you just to check. But any, 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 any avenue which encourages you to save an extra penny is obviously something that we encourage. True that. Cash is king. Cash is king, yes, especially yes, in these times. Yes, cash yes. is king. It is, it is. Mm. I don't think I can add anything else to that. Um, can we invest as a registered chama? Yes, you can. I'm answering some of the questions as we go. Thank you. Um, Thank you. What is your outlook for six months given the current data on PMIs? Okay. Uh, I know I know right now everyone is looking at the inflation numbers because we're trying to see, you know. I mean, how, how is the Fed going to change rates? Are they going to change rates? One of the things we are really looking at is, um, uh, again, I, I mean, and even just to go back to PMI numbers, we find that these figures right now, especially this month and last month are a bit distorted because if you look at the yearly numbers, then you're really looking at them compared to COVID period last year. So we are not so sure what to make of those numbers, but we are, we are also looking at the 10 year US treasuries so for us, that's a very important number for us because if you look at the entire US stock market, the average dividend yield is about 2%. So if the US treasuries are above 2%, that's usually a concern for us. So last month, um, they had ticked a bit higher. Uh, they were approaching 1.8, but now the US treasuries have ticked lower to uh, almost below 1.6. 
So that gives us comfort that the US stock market will continue to, uh, to rally. Another concern we had, and, and this was a big one for us, was especially around uh, the capital gains tax that, that might be introduced by the Biden government. And that's one of the reasons why uh, the US tech stocks had, had really lost value last month, uh, mostly because tech stocks are the ones to be hit the most by capital gains tax. And, and why is that? Because why would, you, why would capital gains tax hit you? It will hit you because you've sold that stock. So who are the investors who buy and sell stocks on a daily basis? It's usually retail investors. So who owns, which stocks are mostly owned by retail investors? It's mostly tech stocks. Okay, so we find that, and that's one of the strategies at MansaX. We typically tend to look for very good, stable companies uh, that pay good dividends and are largely held by institutional investors as a way to protect ourselves from such, from such, um, I mean, from policies around taxes that you really cannot control. So we think the next six months, um, stock market will continue to, to be robust, especially for value stocks. Uh, and especially as, as we start uh, getting our volume, our, our liquidity back from this summer period. But for the next two months or so, I think there will not be much liquidity in the markets. So, and this is now one of the reasons why, again, we always insist on buying dividend stocks because when you go through a lull, like we expect the next two months or so, then you're still earning your dividends. And then that's why we, we don't typically invest a large portion of the fund in growth stocks, in spite of the moves that we have sometimes seen and missed because of that strategy. All right. Um, please take a sip of water, Nahashan. Oh, I keep forgetting. <laughs> yes, we have a lot of questions that are coming up. Um, of course, some we can combine them. Um, okay. Most of them we can combine. Um, I, I think we've answered about the Chama. There's someone else who had asked just below. Um, then there's someone who's asked about uh, top-ups, minimum mm -hmm. top-ups. Um, and then what's your outlook for the next six months? Uh, mm -hmm. I think that one you've answered. Um, mm -hmm. About the quarter one returns, um, mm -hmm. I think you can clarify given the fact sheet that was out. Mm -hmm. um, so the question is on 20, you, you, we have talked about 20%, but annualized return, more like if everything, I think, let me answer that. If everything remains constant, whatever we made in quarter one, uh, we just more like, what do you call it? Project. If yeah. everything remains constant, he said twenty percent annualized return. Not yes, because um, I think the quarter one return was between was about eleven percent, ten point eight eleven percent mm. net. Yeah, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes, I I don't think you need to add on to that, but maybe you can clarify. Yeah, because uh, I think there's another question on the same below. Okay, so mm -hmm. I don't. I know. I know there's a time, uh, and and this. I mean, this one was uh, was really a very a very serious operational uh, concern around here because there's a time I know we had, um, as might happen to every institution. So sometimes your systems might have an issue. So we had an issue around how some of our statements came out in quarter one, and a lot of this, not a lot of this. This has since been really rectified. And, and, and we were very clear that it, there was a lot of, um, it was really a system software issue that we had. But again, it's very good that you make it clear that when we talk about the returns that we talk about, uh, don't forget, even as an investor, uh, your returns can actually also be determined by when you join the fund, all right? I mean, because for example, if say January, February, March, maybe January we had a return of say 5% in a month, that's, that's, that's a high return. Then February and, and March were really underperforming months, for example. Then if you came in February, you will probably have a return much lower than an investor who came in January, all right? Because again, and I have to make this very clear, our returns are not, it's not a smooth return. It's not, uh, it's not we have invested in a bank savings account where we have been paid 10% guaranteed. It's a market determined return. So depending on what point you come into the fund, your returns, may or may uh, typically be different from what another investor, investor might show. And this is actually the, the exact reason why we insist that investors should, should keep their money thus for some time. 
because if you if you keep looking at it from a very short period of time it can be very confusing and stressful to you in fact um, at the beginning we used to wonder should we allow investors to to view their statements on a daily basis and one of the reasons we decided against it was exactly what you're asking because if from a very short term perspective investments can seem very erratic but from a very long term perspective it becomes very clear what the fund manager was trying to achieve for you all right um, minimum total after we have invested uh, 250 initial investment. A minimum top up is 100,000 shillings. All right, Robert, you have been answered. Yeah. And Is it my network? Uh, it is Rose's, Rose's network. So I think Rose should look at your connection. You're having challenges on your end. Um. Yes, and I think Betty, you have been answered on the prorated, um, whether the returns are prorated. Yes, they are. It depends on what time you come in and um, the time that you can get out. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. All right. Um, Erastas, I think we had been answered on how SIB is managing to get over 20% um, returns. Um, the answer is really diversification and uh, a very good choice of asset classes. And, and even just again to that, he, he says that there's a harsh economic environment. If you look at most asset classes, they're rising in value. It's, let's, let's, let's be very clear about which which economic environment you're talking about. Globally, the economic, um, I mean, most, most, most factors of production are back up, uh, oil prices are back up, uh, mm -hmm. even gold itself as an asset. And, and by the way, we, we, have, we have been holding a significant amount of gold from 2018, and that is also going up. So when you say harsh economic environment, you have to be very careful what you mean. I mean, if you, if you even look at a stock like Safaricom, uh, just from last year, year on year, we've gone from 28 to 41 shillings. 41 shillings, yes. I mean, that's a rise of over 70%. So let's be also very clear what harsh economic environment means. It's, it's, it's very subjective. Mm, I agree. And then um, I think we talk about the structure again. I think there are people who joined um, later on, but we just talk about the structure of Mansa X that will answer like three questions that are there. Um, so the question is from Beryl and the other one is from Jay Archie, whether it's governed as a collective investment. All right, so, so Beryl is the one who's asking what instruments and whether they can choose, yeah? Yes, and then uh, the one below is just is um, about the structure, the structure. The structure. Yes. Okay, the burial one is, 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 is simpler because it's really, we are, not, we are a discretionary fund. So we choose what to invest in on your behalf. And, and, and there's a reason for that because if, if we were to constantly change our portfolio based on the input of our investors, even when they mean well, it would be very confusing to, to, to the returns of the fund. I mean, that, there are so many asset classes that investors would recommend or not recommend that it would become uh, very difficult. It would be the, the classic of this classic case, case of too, too many cooks spoil the broth if we tried that strategy. Mm -hmm. However, if you came to us and you are looking to buy certain asset classes just for yourself, we'd be happy to guide you on how to go about that. We can help you with that. Um, then yes, you are right, Jay Archie. It's, we are, it's sort of like a unit trust fund, correct? Especially in how even we value the fund, that is right. And uh, we are now classified uh, as a special CIS. So, you know, very soon the CMA will come. I mean, right now the CMA is completely changing the regulatory framework for unit trusts, not just for ourselves, but for other unit trusts as well. Uh, and, and this framework 
one of the things that they have they have really highlighted to us is they want to categorize us as what you call a special CIS. So you're right about that. Yes, it is a CIS. And for that reason, we will now also have to have a trustee for the fund, uh, which before we did not have to have. Uh, but we are happy to do that, if only to give our investors comfort. Uh, and yes, uh, we do have investment policies. Um, in fact, uh, I mean, we have, this is something that we are required to have uh, by the CMA. We, mm -hmm. we are required to have an investment policy statement. We are required to have, uh, so we did not typically have trust deeds before because we did not need a trustee, but now we have to. We are also governed and monitored uh, by a very uh, robust investment committee, uh, which meets uh, uh, biweekly. And, uh, and yes, we, we, we are now also required to have uh, half yearly reports. So these are some of the things that are now changing, including the auditor reports. And uh, AGMs for investors, that one I'm not so sure. Um, but we, we, we keep having this kind of webinars with our investors. So even, even if not from a regulatory perspective, it's something that we still feel it's important just to keep talking to our investors. So Jay Archie, you are right on one, two, and three. Yeah. Is there a relationship between SIB and Stanford? A, a relationship between SIB and Standard Investment, wait, and, and, and Standard Bank. I'm not so sure I got that. Uh, Rose, I think we lost you there. Uh, Rose, we cannot hear you. I don't know. Maybe you should check your bandwidth. We cannot hear you completely. Maybe, maybe I can just continue answering some of the questions I'm seeing here. Uh, somebody asked whether we can share a link to account opening guidelines. Uh, I guess this we can share. Uh, so that's from Corinne. Corinne, if, if, if you send an email to us, uh, you know, and we'll share the, the contacts after this, then yes, we'll send you the account opening guidelines. Uh, Robert Kasamu is asking whether, whether they can invest in external stocks. And, and can, can everyone hear me? Victor, you can hear me. Victor, you can hear me. Continue. All right, so Robert Kasamu is asking whether he can invest in, in external stocks uh, other than the NSC through SIB. Uh, he says, I'm interested in investing in Elon Musk's Tesla and SpaceX. Yes, please reach out to us. Uh, we can guide you on this. Of course, the minimum for this is, 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 is a bit high right now, but yes, we can help you invest in external stocks just like we do through the Mansa product. Okay, so just a minute as I confirm something. Rose, you can hear us? Hear me? Yes, we can now. We had lost you there for a minute. <laughs> Rosa, are you there with us?
I think we'll we'll need to proceed without Rose because uh, her internet connectivity is not the best at the moment. So I think we'll just pick up from where Rose was. Um, okay. All right. There, there's a part where she's, uh, there's Damaris Njoki was asking about whether we're going to introduce a portal where one can track the daily gains. Um, maybe I can pick that because uh, it looks like it's on the communication end. So what we are working on is an application, the standard investment bank application, and um, it's already available on um, on the App Store in beta mode. So we've not yet launched it, launched it. But in terms of will it be able to track uh, your account on a daily basis? No. Uh, but there's a number of functions that we, it will have uh, sure. that is uh, from. Um, say, uh, if you want to create an account, you want to register for Mansa X, you can create an account and then we can approve it internally. You can also be able to request for your statement via that particular uh, application. But then now in terms of, um, in terms of whether you'll monitor your account on a, like on, like on a live uh, mode, that's not possible. And maybe Nashon can um, explain why, why that won't be possible, uh, being able to track uh, how your account is performing live. <laughs> I mean, it's really just a psychological reason because, I mean, markets markets are very erratic, and and this is something that uh, investors like Damaris and Joaquin need to ask themselves whether they are ready for that. Because you're not talking about markets where every day you're constantly making profits. If we told you that, then we'd be lying to you, right? We have good days, we have bad days. We just try to have an average of better days than bad ones. Now, if an, as an investor you're constantly tracking how much you're making every day, then it, it doesn't even make sense why you should be paying as the kind of management fee that you pay us because then you're going through the same level of stress as we are. And, and that's one of the reasons. So the, the one I agree with is the part for getting your quarterly statements not being automated, uh, that's a concern uh, because essentially you should uh, receive your quarterly statements uh, in an automated fashion. I know we had a bit of an issue in Q1, like I mentioned earlier, something happened, but that was has has since been fixed, and 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 we are really hoping that our investors will have a flawless way of receiving their statements from now, as they were last year, for example. Yeah. Uh, maybe um, in addition to that, I know you'd. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure whether you had responded to the question about is my initial capital safe. And that question has been asked by two users um, on our YouTube channel, Damaris and Aisha. In the event of a loss, is my initial capital safe? It's always a hard one to answer that. Why? Because since we are not a guaranteed fund, then we cannot say that we can guarantee your capital. All right. Number one, even from a regulatory perspective, no fund manager is allowed to say that your capital is safe. And if you find a fund manager telling you that, you have to really ask yourself a few questions because so many things can go wrong in markets, okay? And, and even what you consider risk-free investments, something can still happen, all right? Don't forget uh, what you consider the safest form of investment is government bonds. And we've seen some governments in Africa actually default on bonds, all right? So the safest way if the only way you can safeguard your capital ever is to do nothing. And even then, inflation is a risk for you, all right? So there's no risk-free investment, essentially. So the, the, the answer for me, therefore, becomes a bit more technical, where I then tell you that we approach your investment with a very serious due regard for risk, okay? We employ significant risk management techniques to prevent you from actually losing any of your capital. Okay, we, we work very hard to prevent that, but we do not guarantee it. So it might sound like, like I'm contradicting myself, but that's really the best we can say around that question. And it's a very good thing for you as an investor to ask yourself, what's my level of risk that I'm willing to take in any investment that I invest in, all right? And be very careful to think that an investment that says that it's a safe investment is a better one than one that says that it's not because then the one that says it's probably a safe investment might underperform inflation in the long run and leave you worse off in a few years. Because especially if you're younger, then you're looking to get into above average yield in funds for at least 10 or 15 years for you to confidently say you can retire comfortably. But if you're constantly looking at risk and, and, and the safety of your funds, 
and and going to relatively lower risk investments and getting a, a below average return, then over time you might actually compromise your earnings ability in the future. And that's a real risk you need to look at, which is why I mentioned earlier in this conversation that as investors, it's important that we also talk to financial advisors around such questions. It's very important that you do that. Okay, uh, thanks, Nash. So, on to the next question. Um, I don't know that you answered it. It's misleading to annualize returns, a, a question around annualizing of returns. So, they were saying that it is misleading. If you make a profit and annualize it, looks good. But if you make a loss, the quarter you not annualize the loss. I think just to clarify this, and for all our investors who receive uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the fund fact sheet, what we report, it is a requirement by CMA now, I think for all fund managers that we report, uh, we report actual returns and mm -hmm. not annualize it. So what you, what, you, what you see indicated on the fund fact sheet is an actual return uh, per quarter. And then mm -hmm. now when we add it cumulatively to the end of the year, I don't know that Nash, you would like to add anything to that? That's exactly correct. And, 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 and the reason why they, they actually asked us, I mean, maybe it's for the same reason that we, we might mislead investors by making it look like whatever we made this quarter, we'll also make in the next quarter. And we have completely complied with that. And this is not something that is unique to Mansa X. It's really something that all fund managers do. If it's misleading and confusing, obviously, then we're happy to actually give both numbers. So we actually even give both numbers, Victor, if I'm not wrong, right? We give both. So do we give um, both? Yeah. In terms of what we report, we will just give yeah. the net and the gross. Yeah. That is uh, yeah. that is without five percent, with five percent. But we yeah. are no longer we are no longer annualizing. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah, we are no longer annualizing. Fantastic. Okay. Um. Next question, Maureen. Um. I think this question has been we've answered this question. We've said that uh, 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 we will launch the app once we are done with the developing work. It's available on beta. When you go there, you'll see it, but it's not yet ready for use. So that interface will be provided. So we're hoping that we'll close that latest by next quarter. Uh, Sydney Ethe, IFA question. Do you have an opportunity to be an IFA with SIB, specifically with Mansa X? Yes, we have a number of IFAs who are already registered with us. So uh, you can just send us an email to uh, sales at sib.co.ke. We will pick it up with you. And then uh, we will guide you through the registration process. And then you can become an IFA with, uh, with Mansa X. So we already have a good team and we appreciate them. Uh, proceeding um, up, we've responded to that. Uh, do you entirely invest in US stocks or also other markets, e.g. UK or China stocks? Nashan? Yeah, so we invest in other markets as well. So if, if you come and look at our portfolio, we, we do own stocks uh, in the London Stock Exchange. Uh, we have quite a few stocks, actually. We own stocks in the German uh, uh, Stock Exchange as well. We, we own stocks in various of the ma ma many of the major world uh, stock exchanges, but we, don't, we, we still haven't started investing in the Asian markets. So not yet. We haven't gone into that. And... Um, we are working with what you call liquidity providers to allow us access to those markets, but we haven't gone into them yet. Thank you. I think um, Rijkaard says, does Mansa X need global macro traders? Email me. So I think we, we, we already closed that process. We, we ran a competitive, <laughs> um, uh, 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 competitive process and we are able to, we're able to get uh, new members of, uh, to our team. So unfortunately that we'll have to wait until we come back to us, uh, uh, maybe looking for other, others who are looking to join the Mansa X team. And then um, Jimmy Bet uh, asks whether our fees are negotiable. It depends. I, it depends. I mean, that, that is uh, that, one of the ways to, to look at our fees is also to look at how administratively involved in Mansa is run. And, uh, and that justifies the fee that we charge. And if you look, if you look at the resources required to run a fund like this, from the perspective and where we are based and, and it, it becomes very expensive and that's why we charge the fee that we charge. But that is not to say, for example, we have institutional investors who will come to us and invest as much as, you know, 100 million shillings per investment. And we have a few investors like those. With them, we then, it's, it's it, from that, the, the argument of administrative involvement reduces a bit. So we're able to reduce that fee a little bit with them. And so to answer your question, just reach out. That's all I can say. 
Uh, thank you so much. Um, next, um, I'm interested. Uh, sorry. Um, Vincent Ogutu, I'm interested to learn about Mansa X. It's okay, we'll get in touch with you. You can see that you've shared your contact information. And then uh, advice when withholding tax will apply to our gain. I don't know that you responded to that notion. So when it comes to withholding tax, so right now the return of Mansa X is really a capital gains tax because it's not a market, it's a market determined fund. But within the fund, we, we have some instruments that require us to pay withholding tax, right? Because even within Mansa X, we still invest in fixed income we still invest in uh, uh, bank placements and so on. So we still pay those taxes on behalf of our investors. So by the time you're receiving a return from us, we have already made these payments on your behalf. And that's another advantage of the fund. So um, there's nothing extra that you then need to, to pay, but it's important that you show this in your returns uh, for obvious reasons, because it also implies how much you own and how much you actually make as an individual. David Njuguna, do you have plans to introduce an investment which initial capital is below 100,000? Yes, we mentioned that earlier. And, and remember, we say we are the tail end of, of, of testing a product like this because it's something that a lot of investors have asked us. And as Standard Investment Bank, we are very committed to bringing um, innovative products to everybody in the market. Uh, we do not want to be to, to segregate a bit against anybody. So yes, we are very keen on that. Uh, Vincent, are you concerned about your strategies losing their edge, as happens with some hedge funds over time? Of course, that's the one thing that keeps every portfolio manager like, uh, asleep. I mean, asleep, awake at night, including myself, because yes, you have strategies that work and, and you hope that these strategies continue to work for you. I guess the trick is, is to constantly not get in over your head and, and just keep a lot of uh, strategies simple enough and to also operate within uh, risk management uh, limits. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of hedge funds are brought down by uh, leverage. Okay, it's it's one of the unsaid factors for most hedge funds failing. It, it's not because they really lost money in a certain trade and so on. It's because they lost in a certain trade that was very highly leveraged. It's something that we are very careful about, and 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 and, and we we endeavor to continue working with, within certain risk tolerance limits as imposed by our investment policy statements and our investment our investment committees. And this is uh, this is reviewed regularly uh, on a bi-weekly bi basis. We're always looking at this to see whether they continue to be relevant in terms of managing our risk. So yes, uh, keeping an edge is something that we're always careful about. But due to the fact that some opportunities can also only be availed to you if you have enough capital, at the moment we feel that Mansa X needs to grow even bigger to even access certain even more lucrative and, and with less, I mean, with less proportionate risk opportunities out there than are currently in and reduce our reliance on leverage as well. Okay. Um, Ross will be joining us uh, back, will be back shortly. So say, okay, uh, as we wait for Ross to, to, to get back uh, to the driving seat, uh, we have a trader who says that um, um, he's looking to uh, to liquidate his positions and invest in Mansa X, so he wants to know whether we can give um, whether whether we can what could be our consistent ROI for the next five years if he was to liquidate his positions and invest in Mansa X. Five years. Well, I think the only thing we I mean we always what we say is we try to we try to give a, um, a higher than average return. It it would be very very presumptuous of me to sit here and give you expected ROI for the next five years. Okay, we expect to consistently give good returns, but we are not able to give you a number that we expect to give for the next five years. Uh, that would be rather presumptuous, yeah, I think. Okay, um, so... Um, but yes, please have... liquidate and invest with us still. We still expect to give good returns, yeah, for sure. So Mary Anyango is asking, uh, when are you planning to uh, office uh, to open an office in Kampala, Uganda? Well, we are getting a lot of questions around opening uh, satellite offices. So one of the strategies that we are using is really just using an extensive network of agents, uh, because sometimes you really do not need physical offices every time for this sort of thing, because our trading operations are really domiciled in one area and you don't need that much space to do that. 
but it's very important for us to serve investors from all around East Africa. So there was a question earlier of where is the future of Mansa X and what do you expect for the future? One of the things is really just to hit the region and be able to offer this opportunity to everyone in Africa, even forgetting the region. So yes, um, to answer your question, for now, reach out to us. Whether we have an office in Kampala or not, we will still be able to invest on your behalf. But moving forward, we, you know, this is something that the board is constantly deliberating to see how best to approach these uh, requirements from our regional uh, clients. Our next question, uh, there seems to be a push to market and advertise Mansa X. Is this a sign you need more liquidity pumped into the fund? Well, <laughs> that's a very interesting question because Mansa X is a business. It's a product that we sell, all right? So SIB owns Mansa X uh, as a product and it's in our best interest as an investment bank to continue uh, growing uh, the number of users of this product that we have then created. Uh, and that's what we advertise, okay? We are able to run Mansa X uh, with 10 million shillings under management, the same way we are happy to run it at 100 billion shillings under management. But no, we are not doing that because we are trying to get funds in for whatever reason. No, it's because it's a business that we are running. Uh, the 5% management fee that we earn that is part of the revenue that we earn and it's from there that we then pay our expenses and so on and that constitutes the return that SIB makes. So it goes without saying that yes, we have to market as aggressively as possible if we have to get the message out. And don't forget, even the value, pro even the value proposition for Mansa X is a bit different because we've created a unique. So there's also the need to educate people about it. So this might seem therefore that we are always in people's faces but it's really because Part of marketing the fund involves educating the public about what the fund is about and, and what it entails. Um, and then uh, we have the next question. What regulated crypto traders can one invest in personally? I don't think we have any. Okay, locally none. Uh, globally, well, there are some exchanges that you can access, but I would say, as I mentioned earlier, you have to be very careful when it comes to cryptos, especially if you do not know what you're doing. But Locally, there are none that I actually know that, that you can invest in. Not yet, I don't know. Um, can one invest for their children under their children's names as an inheritance benefit them upon death of a member? Of course, these are legal structures that yes, if you reach out to us, we'll be happy to structure this with you, absolutely. I mean, we've, we've even had clients who invested, especially, I mean, during this COVID period, we, we've been actually unfortunate enough to lose clients. So yes, we, we, are, we are very happy to structure these things with our investors and, and, and part of our account opening process is even just telling us who your next of kin is, for example. And we are happy to, 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 to then uh, do that from a legal perspective, yeah. So James Waidaka, we have invested in Mansa X as a company and so far so good with, uh, with the returns. Wanted to introduce other investors, but, but as an agent to earn a commission on it. Issue is your requirement to be an agent are very limiting. Would love this to be looked at. Uh, James, um, I think we can pick this up with you. If you can share uh, with me your email address, I'll pick this up with you and then we shall be able to find out how to make it easier for you to become an agent with us and earn a commission on the business that you bring to SIB. Um, so um, next, um, I think you've, you've answered on withholding tax. And then um, best, what, what are the best government bonds to invest in? That is Joe Gikuhi. Okay. Uh, well, I'd say Kenyan government bonds are fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of stability in Kenyan interest rates, especially after the interest rate capping. Uh, but I'd say for an individual investor, infrastructure bonds, local infrastructure bonds are very good uh, because then you, I mean, some pay as, as high as 12% uh, on coupon uh, without actually a tax, a tax implication on them because they're not taxed. So that's a very big advantage. Uh, globally, African Euro bonds are very interesting to invest in uh, because then you get about 7% yield um, on dollar denominated bonds, which, which is quite a significant return if you think about it, because the risk that is priced in on most government, on most African governments we feel is of a, 
is overemphasized. So there's always that ad, ad, ad advantage that you have. So yes, I'd, I'd, I'd say that uh, Kenyan government bonds, infrastructure bonds be specific. If you have the funds, then maybe African euro bonds. Um, okay. um, do withholding taxes applicable on certain asset classes count as part of management fees or are they passed on to investors on the return net of fees? Okay, so so this is one I was saying that yes, withholding tax. By the time we are giving you a return, we have paid our the withholding tax on any asset that we hold that has a withholding tax as. So now you receive all this net of all those taxes. Um, and then uh, yeah, Rosella is back now um, as she's preparing. <laughs> uh, James Kaima. Uh, has asked whether we will share a link. We are, yes, we, this is this will be available on YouTube. So we'll share this link on all our social media pages and to everyone who signed up uh, for, for this particular for this particular conversation. Rosella, I think you're back. I don't know whether you're ready to, to continue. Yes, I'm back. Um, I do not know what happened to our network. It just dropped off completely. I hope you can all hear me now. Yes, we and can. Thank so much for the patience. Um, I think we are clocking into two hours already in a hash on. How many liters of water have you taken? <laughs> yeah. So we'll, um, I think we'll limit the questions to, um, I think we can do a maximum of five more questions and then we close out. Uh, then we can take care of, we can answer all the other questions on email, yeah? I don't know what you feel about that, Nahashan. Nahashan, you're on mute. Yes, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Rose. Thank you. All right, all right. Um, do you give advisory services to new investors based on their risk appetite as they're joining? Um, yes. Um, I will answer as Vasily, yes, we do. And also answer on behalf of um, SIB, Mansa X, yes, they also do, yeah? So I think that's the last question that had been asked. Um, then can you use the investment in Mansa X to get a loan facility from a commercial bank? You, you, you know what? Uh, I, I think you can, uh, I believe you can. So if, if you had such a requirement, what I'd recommend that you do is reach out to us, then we can have a conversation with your bankers on your behalf, because then your bankers would need to probably take a haircut on the investment that you have with us based on the implied volatility of the fund. And this is something we can help you to do. We've had investors come to us with the same, with the same concerns, yes. All right, all right. Um, and then what informs the name Mansa X? Back to you, Nahashon, given that. <laughs> it's interesting I did not mention this at the beginning. So mm -hmm. yes, so the reason why the fund was named Mansa X is because this fund is named after the richest man who ever lived uh, up to now. Uh, and this was Mansa Musa. So Mansa Musa was uh, a king in Mali, uh, in Africa, and, and that was a very wealthy kingdom. Uh, you know, if you've ever heard of Timbuktu, that's actually where that comes from. So we found this story very fascinating, especially around how, you know, they were the biggest producers of gold and, and were able to, you know, move this gold around the globe. And, and at some point, um, in the in the Middle Ages, you know what was you know it was a sign of wealth to hear that somebody comes from Timbuktu and so on. So we felt that what happened to the what happened to the shift of of power that at some point then it became more lucrative to say that fund managers in the West make more funds money than you know fund managers locally. So we felt let's let's bring uh, the fund back home and and that's why we decided to create. Um, a local fund, but a fund with a with a global presence, and we felt that the most appropriate name then would be to give a, a tribute to somebody who had already done that in the past very well, who was Mansa Musa. So we named the fund after Mansa for that reason. X is really just it gives it an edge. Okay, so if you add X to something, it gives it an edge. Um, 
So Mansa X, because it felt it's very easy for someone just to remember something when you add that X at the end. And, and this is really something we got from, our, uh, from our, our marketing companies that we use and we found that it really works. Yeah, so that's, that's the background. I agree, it's, it's a very catchy name. Thank you, thank you. Um, the, there was, since you invested in overseas products, will you consider an, allowing clients to invest in foreign currency? I think that question has been asked a lot. Yes, 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 mm. yes. And, and I think, and I think uh, Ella, we definitely have to, eventually we will definitely open uh, a fund that allows investors to invest in dollars. Uh, it's also really just a question of how many people are interested and, and it's clear that there are a lot. So we will definitely continue having this conversation internally. Okay. All right. I think um, from, from the story that you've given about the name um, or the story behind the name Mansa, we'll have a few kids being born next year called Mansa. But like, <laughs> they should. We should, yeah? Yes. 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 All right, I think um, no more questions yet. I think uh, Victor, you did a very good job. Thank you so much for holding Forte when yeah, internet decided to act up. Asante Sana, I don't okay. know whether we have any more questions that are coming in, but please keep them coming. I think our lines are open. Um, SIB, please send in your contact so that people can reach out to you, your telephone number and the like, so that people can reach out. Um, for our, for Vasili, our website is um, www.vasiliafrica. I'll just type it in um, to everybody. Uh, yes. .vasiliafrica.com. Um, for, for Standard Investment Bank, the email is clientservices.sib.co.ke if you can write it down. Um, the website is www.sib.co.ke. Um, so you can go through the website, learn everything that you need to learn when it comes to investments. But please make sure before you invest into anything, you ask questions, as many questions as you can ask, such that you can also be able to explain it to a two year or four year old, not two year old, but four year old. So yes, um, our website has been typed there, vasiliafrica.com. Um, so you'll get our contacts there as well. Get in touch with us and our email info at vasili.com, at vasiliafrica.com. But from me, Asante Nisana, for keeping us company for the last two hours. And it yes. was a very interactive session. Yes. Nahashan? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Rosella, you've done an excellent job uh, moderating this. And Victor, thank you very much. And everybody who attended and all your questions. The only thing I'd want to add is I, I've seen a, a few technical questions uh, from, I think, traders and, and some, maybe some investors who have exposure to financial global financial markets, especially around my opinions around U.S. inflation rates, what I think about the direction of the dollar moving forward, what I think about the US stock markets, what I feel about the Federal Reserve policy moving forward. Please give us your email addresses and we'll be happy to share some of the commentaries and, and write-ups that we do around these issues. And we'll be very ha happy to even just share ideas and thoughts with you because we are not necessarily you know, saying that what we, we send you is a correct thing, but it will be very interesting to just have conversations around this. And, and we, we believe that that's how the market can actually grow. So thanks again for having me today. It was a real pleasure just interacting with you all. Thank you. A nice evening. Asante Nisana. Have a very, very beautiful evening, but please keep the conversations going. Um, shoot the questions as much as you can. Thank you so much. So there are a few quest emails that have come in. I hope, um, Victor, you've captured them. Uh, yes, we'll capture them. And uh, you can continue sending them in. You can send other questions to client services at sib.co.ke. You can leave questions on our social media platforms where, the po where we have posts concerning this particular uh, conversation. And then we will find a way to um, send feedback to your emails if they're going to be available. Thank you so much. Have okay. a great evening. Please get home safe. Sanitize.